Now, where to begin? 2021 will definitely be a year for the books for me, and I will always look upon each month fondly from my personal life to my happy little haven of creativity. From the stress of finding new jobs to moving back and forth and starting a new chapter of my life, sewing and allowing my creativity to flow has kept me joyful this year. From the good and the bad, and the mock-ups, to the finished product. I'm thankful for 2021. Happy 2022! Oh, it's crazy to think that it's a, another year. And of course, every year I always say the same thing. So in 2020, I had made several New Year's resolutions for myself. Uh, regarding my sewing journey. I was letting myself take a little bit of a lax year just so that I can focus on job, um, getting married and the preparations that can go with getting married and then post-wedding and all of that stuff. So I decided that I was going to allow myself some grace this year and not put a whole lot of pressure on myself to um, make lots of costumes this year. But as I was going back and reflecting through how many costumes I made in 2021, um, I was actually pleasantly surprised and quite impressed with myself that I had done so much. And even though I had taken breaks through some months, I was very very proud of what I did and the kind of quality of work that I did. So uh, let's just jump right into it. I have my tea here and ready to go. So in January I worked on two primary projects and one, the first one was an Italian Renaissance gown that I had named the Juliet dress that was heavily inspired by Lucrezia Borgia's one of her dresses that she wore in the Borgia's TV show. It was a monstrous project. I started it back in 2014 and that was right at the beginning of my sewing journey. So crazy, it's just eight years ago. But at the time in 2014, I didn't really have a full grasp or knowledge of how to do research for period gowns and uh, in an era that I really had absolutely no experience in. This was just going to be a Let's just try to wing it and see if we can get something that looks relatively close to something on the TV show. Looking back, I was on the right track, but it really didn't have those nice finishing touches on it as what I had done in January. So in its current state, when I came back to it um, in December and January, was that the dress itself was half finished. There had been no closures, and I only had one sleeve done, and I didn't have any sleeve done on the other side. When I went through, I put in the final bits of details that I had neglected, completely redid the sleeves. I made the faux uh, sleeves underneath, which is, which is actually a um, historical element that they had back in the past. It actually looks very nice, and um, both, both the sleeves and the skirt and everything, very nice. And it's really a shame that it took me eight years to finish this dress because I'm obsessed with it and I think it's very beautiful and um, 
yeah, I'm happy to wear it around. I'll probably wear it to a Renaissance Festival this year, which will be very fun. Let's move on. <laughs> the second thing that I made in January was actually something that was very um, multi-purposeful and something that I could, I could actually wear every day. It's a cottagecore inspired uh, apron that had some 18th century embroidery on the pocket. And what I had done with the embroidery, this was, remember, this is getting right off of my embroidery kick from embroidering my stays and embroidering my reproduction pocket. And so I was just really wanting to get my hands into that embroidery state again. I really like how it turned out, it had nice little ruffles on the top, so very cottage quarry. But the problem with the fabric is that it is incredibly wrinkly. So uh, even if you washed it, you would you would have to iron it. So those were the two things that I had worked on in January. In February, I had worked on three items. And the first item that I worked on was something I wanted to have uh, prepared and ready for for uh, Valentine's Day. So this is, again, getting off of that embroidery kick, uh, a, another 18th century pocket. But instead of it being a reproduction pocket, it is one completely from my own brain. Um, <laughs> It is a Valentine's Day quote pocket. It's got lots of pink and red flowers on it, and in the vines and the greenery making up the design are actually quotes in cursive from some of my most favorite movies and TV shows and novels of all time. I've got quotes from Sense and Sensibility, which is one of my most favorite Jane Austen novels. Of course, I've got Pride and Prejudice in there. I think I've got a quote from the Titanic written down there, as well as um, Lord of the Rings. And I'm very, very happy with the result of it. And even the shape of the pocket itself almost looks like a heart. If I had kind of put a little bit of a notch at the bottom um, and had the binding go around the notch, it would have looked like a cute little heart pocket. Probably one of my most favorites. Yes, I love my reproduction one, but this one is just so, unique and fun. The next thing that I ended up making in February 2021 was actually a Regency winter coat ensemble. So I had a hat, a uh, overcoat, as well as a muff that I made. And I don't really like the Regency period very much um, just because I don't feel comfortable in it. Uh, the, the, the type of clothing, but I decided that, you know, Emma had just come out or at least had been out for a little while and everyone was still talking about it. And I was like, you know, I would really like to, you know, participate in this amazing conversation here. So I hand drafted and come up, came up with a jacket that I I'm actually pretty proud of. Uh, there's only a few things that I would do differently next time. I need to give some more room and space in the shoulders um, just so it's not quite as tight and a little bit more relaxed and fitted. The fabric lining is made out of 100% wool. It's a uh, green wool and the exterior fabric is one that I got at an antique store. It's probably some sort of synthetic polyester. I don't know. And it was all done by hand. I was very proud of it. I did make this entire ensemble within three days because I wanted to try to get something taken in the winter time with the snow and everything like that. The muff was made out of a pillow that I got at Target. It was a little bit too bright of a white for me, so I just went ahead and dyed the fur, the fake fur itself with the tea and coffee grounds and just let it soak there for a little bit and it really took the edge off of the bright whiteness. The hat itself is uh, just a little piling of some uh, green velvet that I had in my stitch as well. So everything turned out really well, just a few things that I would like to change later on in the future. The last thing that I worked on in February was one that I am actually most proud of. It's one of my most favorite uh, little costumes bodices that I made. It's an 18th century um, hunt jacket is what it is, I think. Um, it was inspired by a portrait of Sophie von Schloss. I think it was done in the 1740s. It is very beautiful and several other seamstresses and costume historians have made their own reproductions of these, this particular outfit and with like the tricorn hat and the whole incredibly elaborate ensemble. And I just had to do it myself. 
However, I didn't have any red wool or anything like that, and I didn't really want to buy anything, especially since I wanted it to be for Valentine's Day. The hot pink upholstery taffeta. So it's got a little bit of stretch to it, but it's not like significant. So I had just enough to make this entire jacket, and I still had quite a bit of this very elaborate brocade, um, I guess, applique that I had that would work perfectly as the beading on the bodice. That beading portion is not completely finished. I have to still kind of um, go around all of the applique edges with the beading itself and add the little, like, you know, dangly. But it looks really, really nice, and I'm so incredibly proud of it. It's one of my most favorite pieces that I made of all of 2021, yeah, 2021, oh my gosh. My brain is just not working very well right now. Let's take a quick little hydration break. Moving on, in March, um, this was kind of when there was a lot of uh, discussion going around the whole Bridgerton TV series. And there was a lot of back and forth on if people actually liked the show, if they didn't like the show, if it's considered historically accurate, or if it should never be categorized as a historically or like period drama show at all. So I just wanted to jump in on that kind of little discussion. Personally, uh, I'm not going to get into it because I, I did make a video about my response and my reaction. Yeah, I'll just leave it there. But I made a French court gown just to watch the Bridgerton TV show. And I made it again out of fabric that I already had for several years. Um, the cape itself was made out of a sorry. I really, really love the uh, fabric itself. It's a very beautiful royal blue with a kind of um, French flair to it, I think. It kind of, it looks very French to me. Um, and the dress itself, the Regency gown itself, is a very simple uh, Dupiani silk cream fabric, I guess. It looks much more buttery yellow in person, but in daylight it looks more like a whitish cream color. It's really not really his historically correct project, but it's more along the lines of here's something that they could have done. So let's just move on past that, shall we? In April, I pretty much spent most of my time working on one project in particular that I wouldn't finish until May. So let's just jump on into May because I have nothing to report on for April. So in May, I actually uh, had been finishing a project that I was also very, very excited about. This project that I worked on was my reinterpretation of a uh, painting that was done by Edmund Blair Leeton in 1901, and it's his painting of the Alcalade. I just thought it's just such a gorgeous painting. Since it was based in the 1900s, it's very romanticized, and yes, it is not historically correct because it's an interpretation. Clothing that they wore is, in fact, very different from what is portrayed in Edmund Blair's photo or painting. <laughs> but I absolutely loved the Edwardian version, so I decided to completely recreate this Edwardian version of a medieval dress for myself. I had made a kirtle out of gold qu uh, quilting cotton, and it's actually very pretty. It has a lots of like uh, floral ornateness on it, and also I so that's I made that kirtle with the detachable sleeves, and then I made the overdress that went on top and had like the very like elven long sleeves here and very swishy and very full skirted um, with all of the gore. The white fabric that I had was very warpy and I needed to sew it by hand because it was a very loose weave linen. And yeah, so I did that all by hand and I started putting in, putting on all of the gold detailing on the hem of the skirt. Oh my gosh, that alone took two weeks to do. But I do really like how it looks right now, and I, um, I want to go back and continue putting on all of those details, and um, if you look at the gold detailing up close, it, it doesn't look great. It really doesn't. It just looks like 
yep, the gold pieces are sewn on together. But from a distance, it actually does look quite nice. So uh, that's what I made in April and May. So quite a big project. I think that one was the biggest I did this year, uh, just because it was so detail heavy. And then in June, I finally caved and made a Bridgerton inspired dress. The very floral fabric and the 3D flowers and the tiara and everything like that. So um, yeah, I caved. So anyway, in July, I think this was the most difficult dress that I had made. I made the quickest project I've ever made in my entire life. And in the past, the quickest that I've ever made in 1860s dress that was very simple, very basic, was about a week. Um, maybe, maybe a little bit less than a week, but I've never made a dress in 12 hours. Um, so kudos for me, but I'm never doing that again. That was a mistake. So the skirt was made out of wool, like a lightweight wool, and then the bodice at the top, which was attached to the skirt, um, was made out of a very thin uh, linen. It was more of like a kind of like a cheesecloth. There was the ruffles going up here at the top. I think there were two rows of ruffles, ruffles over on the sleeves, and then at the cuffs of the sleeves, and of course that blue uh, fabric weaving in and out and with bows everywhere. It's a really pretty dress actually. It's very unique and different um, and it looked really good for a dress that was made in 12 hours. However, I didn't get a chance to get any closures on it at all. So uh, in the photos, it's very baggy uh, in the back. It's not fitted properly and I didn't have any time to make undersleeves. You know, I'm pretty proud of how it looks. It's pretty close to the fashion plate. Moving on to August and the kind of beginning section of September. So in August, this was a month before I got married and there were still quite a lot of things that needed to be done. So I decided to just take this month and just <laughs> not do any sewing projects because I needed to de dedicate whatever time I had into my wedding. Early September, I did find time to go ahead and finish um, my something blue 1890s Edwardian corset. I had this corset that was half finished, so I just decided to just take a weekend to just go ahead and finish it. And this corset in particular was much more advanced um, and there wasn't a whole lot of instruction of how to create itself. It just kind of gave you, here's like the bullet points. Here's, here's, this is it, have fun. There are some things that I would like to change and make a little bit different in next time, but since I don't have an 1890s corset, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for and wanting. After I got married, I ended up making some grand panniers and I really wish that I didn't mess with them at all. I wish that I just left them the way they were because they were perfect. The shape was just, it was there. It was rigid and structured enough so that the sides wouldn't flop around. And then I decided to redo it. At the time, I had one project that I really wanted to create and make for this year. And it's a very fancy robe a la Francaise. I was getting very frustrated with redoing my panniers, I think four times, but that means that I have to have a perfect pair of panniers first. Going into October, I wasn't planning on sewing anything because I was kind of getting a little bit burnt out at that point. But one week before Halloween, I had watched the new 2021 Cruella de Vil movie, and I actually really liked it. I thought it was a very interesting spin-off and twist of the classic villainous Cruella de Vil. One of the dresses that was never worn but featured in the movie, which was the butterfly dress, oh, I just loved that one. I thought that was very beautiful. So I wanted to incorporate that look of dress into an 18th century dress meets uh, Cruella de Vil's or Estelle's black kind of regular attire. It took me three days to sew on the beading to the top of front of the bodice. I didn't get time to do closures again. That seems to be a reoccurring problem. I made a uh, robe a la Anglaise, so I had to create 
for this project a brand new pair of stays with embroidery on it, of course, and a brand new bum roll because I don't know where my other embroidered one is. So now I have two. Um, I've never done a Disney bound cosplay before meets history bounding. So that was kind of an interesting project. So I thought that was actually quite fun. In November, I got COVID. And I was basically out of commission, so I didn't sew anything then. And then my final project in December, I, I actually did two things that I'm actually very proud of. I completely recreated a old thrifted jacket that I had, and it's actually the same jacket that I utilized and um, redesigned in my Hobbit video that I made in 2020. It's a wool men's sports jacket and it's I believe it was a size extra large. My initial plan was to take it and tailor it to be a more modern fitted jacket. I looked at what I had here and I was like you know I bet you there's enough fabric here to make an 1890s ladies sports coat. This was more of like a trial. I really love how it turned out. I think I'm on to something here. My last project that I worked on was uh, teaching myself how to knit. <laughs> so I've never knitted before. Yeah, it's okay. It's all right. I just, it, you know, practice makes perfect. That's it. That's all I sewed in 2021. So I'm very uh, grateful that everyone stuck with me for having such a lax year, but I'm pretty sure you all can understand. I'm very happy with everything that I've made so far. <sighs> Here's for a great 2022 with lots of great things coming our way and uh, lots of creativity and inspiration on the forefront for everybody. So I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your new year. Here's for a good 2022. <laughs> Cheers.